Hey Red Sox fans, Lou Merloni here. Now we've been doing this every week now for a couple of weeks because uh, I know on Twitter I get a lot of questions about the Red Sox. And sometimes I answer them, but I feel like it's kind of hard to just sort of answer in a tweet, right? So I started thinking about maybe grabbing some tweets and going through some of your questions and kind of doing it in a little bit of a longer form. So this is kind of what we're doing here. And the first subject I want to bring up is when I got this tweet here um, from Brian Withrell. He says, uh, should the Red Sox trade Xander during the season if they think he's going to opt out? Okay, number one, the situation for Xander is when he signed that six-year, $120 million deal, it was an opt-out after year three. That opt-out is after 2022, so he has two more years here under control. Here's the answer. No, you don't trade Xander. This isn't Mookie. You know, you can disagree with Mookie being traded. We all know there were some financial issues, the future, the rebuild, everything else, whatever. You don't have any of those excuses here for Xander Bogarts. Okay, he's the heart and soul of this team. If you know him, if we, we interviewed him this week. The personality, the leadership. We saw this kid grow as a young kid, turn into an absolute stud. Defensively, he catches everything that's hit. Does he have the greatest range? No, not really, but I think it's improving. I think he works at it. Offensively, he's a machine. He's everything you want. And here's the thing, you're going to know what it's going to cost. you got Francisco Lindor, you got Trevor Story, you got guys like Carlos Correa that are going to be free agents here this offseason. The contracts are going to be there. It's simple. I know it's Boris. You go to him, you look at those comps, and you say, this is what it takes. You open the bank, and you have Xander Bogarts here for the next six years instead of the next two years. When that happens, I don't know if it's this year, maybe in the offseason, but I don't think you can let a guy like Xander go, especially given that Mookie walked out the door. You know what the market is. The other thing he's already shown, that he's willing to take a deal, a lesser deal, than maybe what the market is. This man convinced Scott Boris that a six-year, $20 million deal, when he easily, easily could have gotten uh, $300 million, extend that thing, in third, 25 to $30 million a year? No. $20 million was enough for Xander. Lock this guy up. Don't let him go anywhere. All right, brings us to the next. Our next tweet and subject um, is about Tanner Houck. I got this tweet here from Robin Plimpton McGee. And he says, any chance we see Houck break with the team as a sixth starter to start the year, feel like he's earned the shot. Tanner Houck last year was 3-0 with a .53 ERA at the end of the year. It doesn't get any better than that especially when you watch that staff. This guy popped. It was awesome to watch. He was also a guy that was messed with early in his career. You see him on this. You see what he's like there last September. Sinker, mid-90s, slider, nasty. Always talking about a third pitch. Where's the change? Where's the split? The problem is when he came into the, into the professional baseball, they tried to make him into a four-seam curveball guy. It makes absolutely no sense when you, now that you see his stuff. I love him, okay? I think he's legit. But I also look at this rotation. I see that back end of the rotation, a guy like Nick Pavetta, who I think they like as well, the guy they got for Hembry and Workman. Remember, he's out of options. Okay, so he's not going anywhere. And rightfully so. The guy's got good stuff. I think he's got four pitches he can throw for strikes. I'm excited to see what this guy can do in a change of scenery. Alex Kaur already said that he doesn't see Tanner Howe coming out of the bullpen. And I think you already got a guy in Matt Andrees that can handle that long relief role. I don't mind Hawk starting a year in AAA. Now, if there's an injury, obviously he's up there right away to start. But I don't mind it at all. He's young. I get it. He's probably going to be disappointed. You want to see him. I want to see him. And you will. This is where the impatience comes in, right? It's 162 games, man. It's six months. Tanner Hawk starts the first month or so, maybe even, in AAA. Month and a half. The minute you have an injury, you're calling up a guy that you know can go and pitch in this league and win in this league and dominate, you know, for a short period of time. We'll see. It also allows him to work on that third pitch. Dominant two-pitch guy, there's no question about it. Can I see a change, a split, whatever? A split would be outstanding for this kid. But just to kind of get a little more confidence, just to put a little something else in the hitter's mind. Two pitches is tough to get through for a start. The only guy I ever knew was Randy Johnson, right? Throwing fastball slider, 98, 99, whatever. But other than that, it's always a third pitch. Give him a month, month and a half, continue to gain some confidence in that third pitch, and then you'll see him up here in the big leagues, and I think he can really help you. Um, the next one we got, I believe, was... A Michael Chavis question. This from MC Gadsden. He asked me, he says, uh, Michael Chavis needs to start the season on the roster, especially if Franchi Cordero is not ready for April 1st. Does Chavis make it? He should. No. And I don't think it has anything to do with, with um, Franchi Cordero, to be honest with you. I just I look at some versatility here. And I think Michael Chavis, real quick, so he comes on the scene. And there's no question, right, he can hit some bombs. There's no doubt about it. He needs to learn how to hit, though. He can hit home runs, but he learns, needs to learn how to hit. So he comes onto the scene 
Uh, first half, All-Star break 2019, he was hitting a 263 at 15 bombs and an 800 OPS, roughly, 799. Since the All-Star break in 2019 and last year, he's a 215 hitter and a 640 OPS, and he strikes out a third of the time. It's just not going to cut it. You have too many other options. He needs to go down to the big, down to minor leagues, okay? Plus, he has options. Again, he has options. He goes to AAA, and he works on cutting down the strikeouts. He works on making contact. He works on being more of a complete hitter. He's still got pop. That's who he's going to be. But still, got to make more contact than what he does. Also, improve defensively. He has versatility, but if Cordero is out, Cora's already talked about carrying three bench guys. Ploiecki is the catcher. No question about it. Marwin Gonzalez is on that team. I don't know if Danny Santana or Franchi Cordero will be ready um, to play and be that other third bench guy. The other guy could be Jairo Munoz. I mean, dude, this guy last year was like an electric factory when he came up. I mean, it was like unbelievable. And by the way, all he does is hit. He really can hit this kid. He can play some left field. I just think Chavis needs to take a step back. You know, uh, Ice Horse needs to slow down a little bit and get back to grinding things out down in AAA, find himself, and hopefully he can come back to the big leagues and enjoy a nice career. Uh, last one here, um, Rafi Devers. I got this tweet here from Bizarre27. He says, what is the reasonable expectation for Rafi Devers on the field and at the bat? Uh, breakout year, hopefully. We'd like to see him step up and lead with the Aruban Prince, meaning Xander Bogarts. Uh, I love Rafi Devers. 2019, 311, he had 32 homers, 115 RBIs. The OPS was, what, 916, he had 54 doubles and had 200 hits. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that offensively. And I think last year, a little bit of a dip, no question about it. He got hot, he hit 11 bombs in a short season. Alex Cora is huge for him. I think he needs that mentor. He needs somebody pushing him. Um, I was really impressed with Xander Bogarts on Nesson talking about some honesty, right? How, how this kid takes some bad at-bats into the field. You know, and you got to separate that as a professional. You know, they 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 got to be different. You know, if I'm struggling with the plate, I got to be able to pick it. Most of his errors, mental errors. A little bit lazy sometimes with his feet. He's got to clean things up defensively. He's got to clean it up there. And offensively, it's just about chasing, staying within the strike zone. He's a free agent in a couple of years. Now is the time to strike. Now is the time to sign this guy to an extension because. I think a monster year is coming with Alex Cora again here at third. This kid is just too good of a hitter. Monster year. You tie him up now. Last year was a little bit half. There's still some question marks about him. I believe in him. Rather than wait for him to give you an MVP all-star type of season, do it right now. Lock up Rafi Devers and have him and Xander Bogarts on that left side of the infield for a while. We'll, everybody talks about the defense. Everybody talks about it. We're going to give him another year. I want to see him improve. Maybe next year, year and a half, we will see. Eventually, will there be a move to first base? He's going to dictate that. He's going to determine that. He's going to make that decision for you by how he starts playing defensively, and hopefully he picks it up. All right, that's going to do it uh, for the week. We will see you next week. we got more games to talk about for sure. And remember, opening day, what, just three weeks away? All right, see you next week.